Hello, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm going to help one of my subscribers improve his serve. Now, you and Novak do something very similar, where at the beginning, you both have your front toe up. And that's actually a good sign that the weight has rocked back and that the weight is on your back foot. And it's just something that then allows for rhythm. And then you get to lean forward in your serve. So you rock back and then you rock forward. Same thing as Djokovic. Now, when we just look at Novak's serve, watch how still his feet are. And his feet do not move. With your serve, you'll notice that as soon as you toss the ball up, both feet switch positions. And so what I would like you to do is adjust your back foot's position. We'll look at Novak here. Novak's back foot is parallel to the baseline. So his back foot is parallel to the baseline position, where your back foot is actually pointing right at the camera. So what I would like you to do is to adjust your back foot so that it's parallel to the baseline. The reason the way you are standing with your toes both facing in the same direction, it makes you off balance. And I think that's actually why your foot is moving. See, a lot of times when people toss the ball up and Edward, they move their feet, they're actually moving their feet to a place that's more comfortable and more stable for them to hit off of. And I actually want you to not feel off balance, but actually have your back foot more parallel from the beginning that back foot more parallel from the beginning, just so that you're more stable. So I want you to have your back foot more parallel, but I also then want you to work on, and I'm going to show you this again on court, is I want to have you practice serving where your feet do not move. Literally, you serve and you don't jump into the court, you don't fall into the court. You're perfectly on balance because if your lower body is off balance and unsure of itself, we'll say, then it's going to really lead to the upper body and the serve and the swing and the toss uh, to not be stable as well. So we got to work on having your lower body really stable. Again, if we look at Novak here, he does not move his feet on this serve. So his feet go nowhere. So it's really important that we practice this. Feet still back foot parallel to the baseline. The second idea is your tossing arm. So let's check out Novak, and I absolutely love this about him, is how long his tossing arm stays up. So if we just get into this position right here, this would be what we would call like the knock the party hat off position, right? And, and we're going to talk about that for you in a second here as well. But if we just put the racket, let's go right to here. I think this is a good one. Notice we can see for both of them the racket on the front side of your head right? The racket is to the front side of your head. Look how high his left hand still is. His left hand is way up and he has a great shoulder tilt. So he's got his left shoulder much, much higher than his right shoulder. You'll see with your shoulders, you're very level and your left hand is actually lower than head level where his is up. So in addition to keeping your feet very still, I want you to work on keeping your tossing hand up with your shoulders tilted for as long as possible. It'll feel very awkward. I, if I could kind of give you the magic pill, the magic Novak Djokovic pill and have you serve just like Novak Djokovic, right? You take a medication and then you go to the doctor and they give you the Novak Djokovic pill and you start serving like Novak that moment, right? It would feel so foreign to you to have that left hand up for so long and the shoulders tilted. But this is one of the hallmarks of a great serve. Shoulders tilted so the swing is ready to go up, left hand up in the air so that when it drops and it tucks, it's timed properly for acceleration. So working on that left hand and shoulder tilt, left hand up and shoulder tilt, really, really important. And then the last thing is the movement that he makes with his racket. I want to show you as he lifts the racket, this view right here, notice how the tip of the racket is visible and really pointing to the camera. When you go across your feet, just like Novak, you point the tip of the racket, and this is so common, Edward, you point the tip of the racket to the back fence back here. Where Novak does not, you'll notice Novak does not point the tip of his racket to the back fence. Here, the tip of his racket is pointing down, and you have the same thing. Both of you have the tip of the racket pointing down. 
Notice when he lifts the racket, he points the tip of the racket basically right at the camera. And that's when he then brings the racket in over his head, knocking off the party hat. So what I want to help you with, Edward, is that you don't point the tip of the racket back here at the back fence, but rather you have the tip of the racket pointing at the camera. Now it's a slightly different camera angle. So you can see that your baseline and his baseline aren't lined up perfectly. So we would need the camera more this direction to get this. But the, the, the many of the pros point the tip of the racket as they're lifting it up along their own baseline. And you can see that the tip of his racket, the baseline, they're really pointing in the same direction. And then that's when he brings the racket in over the head. You go very much into the classic waiter's tray position, where as soon as you go across your feet, you point the tip of the racket to the back fence, and then you point the tip of the racket kind of uh, like to this stadium seating back here. And the tip of your racket is pointing back. What I want you to do, just like Novak, is after you toss the ball and you lift the racket, on its way to knocking off the birthday hat, have the tip of the racket pointing right at the camera. And that'll get you using the proper throwing motion. So we're going to work on your feet, keeping your feet very still. You, you have a good rhythm, uh, Edward. Like You have good components to your serve. Just simple tweaks here and there are going to make a world of difference. So we're going to keep your feet very still. We're going to keep your left arm up much longer with a shoulder tilt. And we're going to work on when you lift the racket, having the tip of the racket point at the camera on its way to the birthday hat. All right, Edward, let's get on court. So Edward, the first thing I want you to do is hit some serves where your feet don't move. It'll look like this. You're just going to hit serves and your feet don't move. You're going to stay perfectly on balance. In fact, I really want to focus on the finish. When you're done, I want you to freeze your finish. Serve and don't move. Just hold your balance. The only thing that'll move is your back foot turning up on the toe. Now we talked about this back foot. And when you start, you have your toe pointing the same direction as your front foot. So a lot of people, they know that that front foot is going to be usually angled in. Well, you have your front, your back foot angled in as well. And just even trying that, that feels very off balance. So two things we can do. We can put your back foot more parallel to the baseline. And also, rather than having your foot behind you so far, you can work on having your front, sorry, your back foot more in line with your front foot, more like you're on a skateboard. And since, remember, you tossed and you moved your foot this way, it might be that you just feel more comfortable with your right foot more over to the right than having it way back here. So I'm not going to force you to keep it back here. If it feels better over here, then that's fine. But the real goal with this foot is to have it parallel to the baseline. So hit serves. Hit serves where your back foot finishes up on the toe and you hold your balance. It's going to feel weird for you to not move your feet all around. The second idea, your left hand. You're tossing and your left hand is coming down super early. I want you to hit serves, and here's a simple drill you can do. I want you to hit serves at first where you feel like you're crossing your wrists up here and then your arm comes down. So this is what it looks like. I'm gonna hit some serves where I cross my wrists. So I feel like I'm crossing up here. It's almost like my left arm's in the way. Again, this is a drill. This isn't how you're actually going to serve. This is just a drill. It's kind of like a cast on a broken arm. We're fixing something or giving it a chance to heal, right? So we're going to do the, the opposite, the other end of the spectrum. We're going to see, rather than dropping your arm too early, we're going to see if you can keep your arm up too long. And the feeling is that you cross your arms up here and then they both come down. You can couple that with the feet staying still and not jumping or moving with your feet. It'll be great. Now, to take this a step further is you can really work on having your shoulders tilted and focusing on that. But I have a feeling that just keeping the left arm up in the air a really long time will help you naturally get more of that shoulder tilt that you want. So the left arm up a really long time. Maybe I should actually demonstrate hitting it over the net. There we go, right? Arms crossed, but you're crossing up here with that left arm staying up a really long time. And the last thing is where the tip of your racket is pointing. 
So when you began, you pointed the tip down like Joker, we saw that, but then you pointed the tip to the back fence, and then from the back view, the tip of the racket pointed off to the left. What Djokovic does, he brings the racket up, and the tip of the racket points the same direction his chest is facing. So when you begin your serve, don't allow the tip of the racket to point to the back fence, but rather, when you lift your racket up, point the tip of the racket off to the right of the camera. That's what's then going to allow the racket to come in over the head. So a drill you can practice is toss the ball, lift your racket up, and have the tip of the racket point off to the right of the camera. And you're not even going to catch the ball, you're not going to hit the ball or anything. You're just going to stop in this position. Notice that my racket never points to the camera. I'm just going across my feet, lifting my racket up, and the tip of the racket points off to the right. So now I'll hit a serve. I'm gonna keep my feet still. I'm gonna keep my left arm up a really long time, so long that I, my wrists cross as I hit. And that really wouldn't be ideal. What you would want is when your racket hits the birthday hat, that's finally when the arm drops. But we're gonna completely go to the other end of the spectrum by getting that left arm to stay up too long. And then you'll notice that the tip of my racket points off to the right of the camera. And then once you see a couple uh, back views, I'm gonna show you the side view as well. So now I want to show you from the perspective that we saw with Joker. And we got the front foot angled in, back foot parallel to the baseline. So you want to hit some serves where you are super stationary, not falling over. Once you get used to not moving your feet, then you can get used to then jumping, but just like Djokovic, he didn't move his feet around and then jump. Feet stayed still, and then he jumped off of that solid base. Second thing. Keep your left arm up for what feels to be way too long. You might even feel like your wrists are crossing. And it's just a way to do the opposite of what you're used to. You're used to tossing and your left arm goes down and your whole swing is done with the left arm down, which isn't gonna be conducive to a good throwing motion on your serve. You want that left arm up in the air and then when you get to the party hat, that's when the non-hitting hand drops. When you get the racket to pass in over the head, that's when it should drop and then tuck in against the body. But an easy way to practice this at first to kind of shock the system and do something completely different than you're used to is to keep your left arm up for so long that you almost cross your wrists just after contact. And that's just an easy way to get rid of that early left arm drop. And then last, and you can use a basket to help you with this, you're used to reaching back with your racket and hitting the ball hopper. When you bring your racket up, Try to have the tip of the racket when you film yourself and film yourself right along the baseline the way you are here. Have the tip of the racket face the camera. So you toss, lift the racket with the tip of the racket facing the camera. Don't point it to the back fence. Don't point it this way, you know, the opposite. And don't go back and hit the basket. So you can have something right there to keep this from happening. You want to lift the racket up and have the tip of the racket face the camera. All right, let me hit some serves. And what I'm gonna do is I am going to jump now, but you'll see that my feet stay still. I keep my left arm up with my shoulders tilted and uh, tip of the racket faces the camera. Hit the top of the tape, but man, that felt good. Two more. Edward, thank you so much. Thank you for trusting me to help you. I appreciate you watching. If you like this video, by the way, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. Be sure to like this video if you got anything out of it. And if you would like me to possibly include one of your videos, serve, forehand, backhand, whatever stroke, in a future critique, go ahead and send a video to my email, ryan at 2 And I might include you in an upcoming video. So, 
Edward, if you keep your feet still, keep your tossing arm up for much longer and you work on having the tip of the racket face the camera, there is no doubt you're gonna gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this, Edward.